but we'll start off from the beginning because obviously baseball has to start somewhere, like for me with my broadcast in the backyard. Uh, so for you, what were some of those earliest baseball memories? Uh, so for me, so when I was a kid, when I was seven years old, I uh, was diagnosed with cancer. Uh, so that was going to be my first year playing baseball, actually, but I wasn't allowed to play. So I bat boyed for a whole year with a bunch of my friends when I was a kid, just so I could be around the game. And then once I was better, I started playing again when I was eight years old, nine years old. So that's actually my first experience with it is I got the bat boy and just watching made me love it. And then from there played every year, favorite sport my whole life. And that's, I mean, that was the start of it. Is that where the speed came from? Well, my mom and dad will both argue that I got my speed from them. So my dad played football in college, and my mom was a very good gymnast. So uh, both of them argue that I get my speed from them. So I guess both of them combined, I got pretty good genes when it comes to speed. Yeah. And then uh, you mentioned that cancer diagnosis for you. That went on, affected you pretty much your entire childhood until you were uh, pronounced cancer free by doctors when you were 17 years old. You know, how are you able to fight through that, beat cancer, and still, you know, keep up a successful athletic career? I mean, part of it is I'm lucky that it happened when I was so young. So, like, being seven years old, I didn't know really what was going on. I just knew I was sick and that I couldn't do all the stuff that I wanted to do and that I wanted to get better. So, I mean, I think it was a lot harder on my parents and stuff like that than it was on me because I was too young to really understand what was going on. And then once I was better and... I was just ready to go, you know? That was just, okay, now I'm ready to go and do whatever I want to do. For sure. And then you ended up playing college ball. You started off at UNC Asheville, moved to Cincinnati, and then the Cubs selected you in the 13th round. So it wasn't necessarily a straightforward, clear path to the MLB, but, man, you made the most of it up there, you know, drafted in 2008, and you're up with the Cubs in 2011. Just how were you able to get through the minor leagues so fast and, you know, to be in the MLB, you know, what was that like for you? Uh, I think, I mean, I just have one of those tools, like me being fast is a thing that teams will rush you to the big leagues. If you can show that you can hit and play defense and steal bases a little bit, if you're fast, they want to get you there fast because speed is one of those things is as you get older, you get a little bit slower. So when, they, when you're young and you're fast, they want to get you to the major leagues as fast as you can. But, uh, yeah, like you said, it, was, it wasn't it was always an easy, like, a thing that I knew was going to happen because I'm super small. I never showed a lot of power. I hit, you know, my only home run in the major leagues is an inside-the-park home run. So, I mean, I'm not this, this power-hitting guy that's going to hit a ball all over the yard. I, I kind of just had to use what God gave me, which is my speed and go play defense and bunt and slap the ball around. Well, we'll get to that inside the park home run later, but uh, I've watched this video a few times, came across it over quarantine where uh, it was made the cut on YouTube and it was Tony Campana being unbelievably fast. There's some great highlights in there, especially I love your Superman dive over the Astros third baseman, and that was amazing. Um, but you got to the MLB there really quick, as we mentioned, talked about there. Uh, what was that first game like for you? Can you reflect on that a little bit for us? Yeah, so uh, I was actually, when I got called up, I, we were in, I was in AAA, we were in Reno, Nevada, and uh, the manager called me into the office, it was Bill Dancy, and he actually first told me that I was going down to AA because somebody had got hurt in AA and oh, no. they needed a replacement, and I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, but first we're going to send you to Cincinnati, and <laughs> Cincinnati is where I'm born, well, that's like my hometown, and that's where the Cubs were, so I got to fly to Cincinnati through the night. It was like a red eye flight, got there. My parents picked me up from the airport. It was like little league, like little league, your parents take you to the field. They, yeah. They're dropping me off at the Reds ballpark. And uh, yeah, it was kind of a miserable day. It was rainy and not great. Not a lot of fans there, but I had like 300 people there rooting for me and I got to go in and 
uh, one of the coaches told me, you only get one first pitch, so you better swing at it. So I was swinging at the first pitch no matter what. Hit a double. It was really cool. It's not bad. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, I listened to the Compound podcast a little bit, and following that, I'd seen uh, Zach Short. They made a bet that he'd swing at the first pitch or made a deal or something. He didn't, but, hey, that wasn't a bad first that bad either. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was not. Yeah, so the Cubs, obviously, very historic franchise, and playing at Wrigley Field, that's a whole different atmosphere. What was it like playing in, you know, blue pinstripes for the Cubs? Man, playing there, you just, even like, so when I was there, the, the locker room isn't wasn't the nicest. You know, it was old and everything, but you're like, man, there's been great players that were in this locker room, could have been in that locker over there, and just walking down the tunnel and walking around the field, you just, there's so much history, like, God, the people that have played in this park, and now I get to play in it, it's super humbling, and and then you got the fans that are just amazing. I mean, Cubs fans are the best in the world. I mean, me, it was, I mean, I'm not a huge name guy, and I still get recognized, and people talk to me all the time and say, hey, I remember when you were with the Cubs, and it's just amazing. Cubs fans are amazing. So they just make that Wrigley Field experience even better. Oh, yeah, we never forget, especially for me. 2012 is a real year where, like, I remember most of the guys from the team because that's one of the earliest years I can remember, you know, me being little and looking up to you guys. Uh, we went to a game in 2012, and I was a part of the Cubs Kids Club, and we got to take a little tour of Wrigley nice. Field. And what I remember most about that tour was that Michael Jordan had used a locker in the visitor's locker room. It was really small, and the Bears head coach would turn off the water, uh, warm water for the visiting teams. So I'd have to go back to the hotel. <laughs> and, pl- and, and shower, I'd- yeah. Yep. Uh, so that was amazing. And, you know, I got to see you guys play the Dodgers, so I'm always going to remember that. Uh, but unfortunately, the awesome. Cubs did end up trading you away to the Diamondbacks in, was that 2013? Yeah. 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 And so how did you, that's obviously tough news for a big leaguer, especially so early on in your career. Um, how did you take that news when they told you? Um, well, the good thing about Theo and Jed is they are very, they are very good at communicating. So like, they are going to let you know what's going to happen before it happens which not all organizations are like that, not all GMs are like that, but they were very good about calling me a couple days before and letting me know what was going to happen. And it was stressful because I had already gotten the spring. It was right in the middle of spring training, like right before spring training started. So I had already moved out to Arizona and gotten a place out there for spring training. And they told me, they're like, you're going to end up being traded, so – we're going to try to make it a team that's still in Arizona and not a team that's doing spring training in Florida. So I was like, Oh gosh, please let it be a team in Arizona. (laughs) So I don't have to pack everything back up and move again. So, uh, luckily it was the Diamondbacks and, and that was a good organization too. And, and it was just, I mean, they were, the Cubs were in a rebuilding stage and that was just one of the moves that they made. And it ended up being a good one. They got a couple good young players for me and then turned around and traded one of those guys for, a relief pitcher that helped you guys win a World Series. So. Oh, yeah, you can always say, hey, I helped you win a World Series by that. No. Dempster, <laughs> yeah. uh, he's always talking about how he won us a World Series by getting uh, Hendricks in the trade. I remember him joking <laughs> about that. Uh, you had some – that's always a fun 2012 team. You still have you guys around. But, hey, and that's not bad either. You're already in Arizona checking out the area, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, – So, next question, of course, we talked about earlier a little bit, but I feel like it needs its own breakdown, and it's your only MLB career home run, that inside the Parker, which I'm sure is the shortest home run ever hit at Wrigley Field. For sure, it's got to be. It's funny, because when I first hit it, I thought it was going to be a line out to third base. Like, I thought the third baseman was going to catch it, and then it got over his head, and then the Reds, for some reason, decided that Yonder Alonzo was going to be a left fielder, and... (laughs) And that was not a good first day for him to be a left fielder uh, and kind of butchered it. And and once it got by him, I, I knew before I even got to second base that I was going to get all the way around. Uh, it was super exciting. And funny thing is when I got to the uh, dugout, all the guys were like, oh, man, that's tough. They gave him an air. <laughs> really? 
Yeah, so Marlon Bird and all those guys were like, gosh, that's a tough single, man. And I was like, what are you talking about, single? They didn't even touch it. He goes, I don't know. They gave him there. So I didn't even fully know until the next inning because I went in in the locker room and checked to the box score and saw home run. And I was like, you guys. Oh, man. Unbelievable. That's <laughs> <laughs> and you scored standing too, so I mean, in in the end, that's definitely a home run in my book. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I got in there before the ball was even in the infield. That's for what sure. I always thought. I was like, that's I was a home run. before the ball even got out of the outfield. I'm sure the bleacher bums yeah. could have thrown one back quicker than that. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so, what were a few of your other favorite moments in the big leagues? I'm sure that was one of them. Um. Yeah, that's probably on the top of the list. Cincinnati opening day, Cincinnati's. That's one of the top of my list. Um, I had a walk. My one of my only walk off hits I had in Arizona. Uh, that was a really big one. Uh, I had never had a walk off in any level before, so to do it in the big league was really cool. Um, I never made an opening day roster with the Cubs, so in 2014 I got to go to Australia with the Diamondbacks, oh, and we had cool. an opening day with against the Dodgers in Australia. Which was weird because it was right in the middle of spring training. So, like, we had spring training and then we had three games in Australia that counted yeah, for the regular weird. season against the Dodgers. And then we came back and played more regular, uh, more uh, spring training games. <laughs> and then we had another opening day, which I made that opening day roster too. So, it was that was pretty cool. I had like four opening days that year. <laughs> well, got everyone prepared for opening day 2.0 this year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, since your MLB days, you bounced around, you know, different leagues, the minor leagues, independent leagues, you're now playing in Mexico. What, you know, at 35 years of age, you don't see many guys still playing nowadays. What, what keeps you going playing baseball? I mean, I just love the game. I mean, I, I really like the game, love the game of baseball. It's, it's my passion and, uh, and, it's what I want to do, and I'm lucky enough to have a wife that totally supports me, and she's cool with me going to all these crazy places and and trying to to play. I think I'm about done now. Um, I know I'm starting to feel it in my body. I'm not as not as I don't recover like I used to, so it's starting to come to an end. But uh, I still really love it, and I'm excited about it every day. And it's just something that keeps me going. Yeah, and it's great stories for the kids too. Uh, and yeah. my dad, when he was 35, he'd probably pull a hamstring running to first base. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, the MLB nowadays, it's so reliant on these uh, home runs. There's a lot, you see a lot more strikeouts and less walks, less stolen bases. And so my question for you is, do you think it would be good for the MLB to have more guys like you where, you know, they're small ball type players, you know, those bunts that are so exciting, the inside the park home runs, and, you know, you have MLB experience. So what's some other ways you think they could improve the game? Yeah, man, I mean, I'm, I'm super biased because that's the kind of player I am, but I absolutely love the kind of small ball type of game. I understand that a home run scores runs quicker than bunting a guy around and stealing. I like totally understand it, but yeah, I think it makes the game more exciting when you have a bunch of different kind of players on the field. So you got like your little fast guys, you got the big power hitters, you got your guys somewhere in the middle. Like I think that's why baseball is such a beautiful game is because it's not like basketball where everybody's tall. It's not like football where everybody's big and fast. It's and you got all kinds of different types of players, and they all can be good. And that's that's what I love about baseball the most. Is it doesn't matter, like, if you look like me, 5'8", 165 pounds, or Prince Fielder, who was 6'4", 260. I mean, it just didn't matter that we, we both could play. I mean, that's, that's awesome. It's a great point. And, you know, I have this uh, joke that I like to tell for sports where Steph Curry – you know, he walks into an NBA locker room pretty much looking at the ceiling. He walks into an MLB locker room, and sometimes you might be the tallest guy in the room. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, absolutely. He's a tall dude, and everybody thinks he's short. Yeah, he just looks that way against with all those giants there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I have some fun questions to end out the interview here, some would-you-rathers for you. So, okay. would you rather keep your inside-the-park home run, or would you rather hit one over the fence? 
Uh, I keep my inside the park home run, especially if it's just one over the fence. That's not as cool. So if I'm only going to have one, I'll keep my inside the park home run. Would you rather sign a baseball or a baseball card? Uh, I'd rather sign a baseball card. All right, that works because I have a rookie card of you. <laughs> nice, perfect. And then uh, would you rather watch a TV show or read a book? Uh, watch a TV show. Agreed. <laughs> I can't if it's a good book maybe but I mean most yeah, books I've, I've read some books I like books but I would much rather sit down with a TV, TV show, show you can see what's happening right there for sure yeah instant gratification you don't have to know what's coming yeah well thank you so much for taking the time to do this Tony I had a blast talking with you this was awesome no, oh, I appreciate you having me, man. You're, it's a great interview. You're a good interviewer, and I had a lot of fun. Thank you so much. That means a ton. Yeah, no problem, man.